Join us this week as we travel across beautiful Utah. We explore giant kilns in the ruins of an abandoned boom town, meet the father of television, discover a ranch among Utah's famous arches, and delve into famous John Jarvie's historic past. In Building with Earth Bags, we discovered our family thrived creatively and grew stronger by working side by side. We welcome you to be part of our family and for this week's adventure. The first stop was once a rowdy boon town. This is Frisco, Utah. It was settled in 1875 with a peak population of 6,000. Folks came here to mine silver from the infamous Horn Silver Mine, but what brings us here is these five unusual beef pipe charcoal kilns. I believe they were constructed to refine silver, huh. which is incredible. Considering how the disrepair and falling down the rest of the buildings are, it's remarkable that the round shape has stayed so long. Yeah, some of these are totally complete. A few of them I was noticing are busted in in the back. Oh, are they? But you can see, you can even smell. You can still smell the 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 uh, charcoal on the walls, which is incredible. It just makes you curious how they refine this stuff. Now, what's really interesting about this place called Frisco, the way that they did their mine was so poorly constructed, eventually it caved in. The mine collapsed in 1885. Although it produced for decades after, it was limited, and by the 1920s, it was almost completely abandoned. These kilns are a neat reminder of the some $50 million worth of silver they mined out of here. It was said to be the roughest town in this area. A murder took place a day at some point. Oh. Complete except for like a little bit busted out. I Looks think like the door kind of came off a little. The door came off a little. Brick and stone? Yeah. Probably, or just maybe just right maybe here? They just whatever they had. An, an opening for the smoke, I'm assuming, right? You can see it's a conical shape all the way up to the top. I would kind of think that once they're pulling the stuff out of the ground, it would make sense to actually have a place to refine it. Right. Looks like they have a little ledge. So like they're built up to some point and then the ledge, maybe that's when they start really going in. Or the dome, yeah. Yeah, that one looks to be the most complete, honestly. We'll have to go down and see it from the inside. Right. There's smoke no leaks way. from everywhere. But most of the smoke probably escaped through here. Yeah, that would make sense. The path of least resistance. You can really see here the blackened walls and you can still smell that charcoal smell that is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's insane. I wonder how hot they were. Mm, look how big these rocks are. I love the archways to get into them. Right here, you can really see the purposefulness of like these air vents, right? Oh yeah, look at those in there. Fires obviously need the oxygen. But you know what's kind of interesting? There's a lot of old equipment here that looks like it ran at one time. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, if you were leaving this place, if you had like a Facebook marketplace, those things probably wouldn't be there because be like, come pick up now. <laughs> <laughs> say some of these look like toadstools? They do. Especially like these guys here. Come on my dudes, this way. Don't you wanna? Our next stop is Beaver, and it holds an unexpected surprise. This sleepy little town is where the father of television called home. This guy right here, 
Philo T. Fernsworth is the father of television and I mean like this dude he made unbelievable things at first because you kind of look at the side of him he's kind of got the profile of Lincoln Philo T. Fernsworth made many things but he is most known for the very thing he's holding here the image dissector camera tube which was used in TVs for years he's so lifelike it's kind of spooky all the way down to his cowboy boots Unbelievable. Very, very cool. Philo was born in this very log cabin near Beaver, Utah in 1906. He was very inventive at a young age. He was producing devices by his 15th birthday. Philo's dad is said to have built this cabin. I don't think it was built on this site, but they took it down and reassembled it here. So there's Philo right there. There's a picture of him. And there's his wife, Elma. And the age of 21, he was able to transmit his first image. It was an image of his wife. Transmitting visuals led to what you are seeing right now. What mm -hmm. we're all able to use. It's incredible. It's incredible. And Philo was the one that really pioneered that for all of us. Was there a door and a window on each side of the cabin? Looks like it. Why not, huh? visit Utah without seeing the arches. What we didn't expect to find was a cozy little cabin on the hike up to the famous Delicate Arch. Come to find out, it was a small homestead belonging to the Wolf family, dating back to 1898. John Wesley Wolf built this cabin with his eldest son, Fred. And glass windows too. See that? The family was living it up, apparently. <laughs> How cool is this? It's like a dugout up there. Look out. Wow. Maybe like a little root cellar or something. Root cellar? Yeah. You can see the roof. They mostly raised cattle until they eventually sold the property in 1914. The park preserves the property today for us to enjoy. What a beautiful place to call home. destination was home to truly the jackiest of all trades, Scotsman John Jarvie. He and his wife Nellie moved to this property in 1880. We're here at the John Jar John Jarvie? John Jarvie. Jarvie. John, John Jarvie. John Jarvie. John Jarvie. JJ's place here. This is his cabin. Yeah, his cabin area. His old land, I he suppose. He had like a, he would hire a lot of ex-cons, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance, and kid. the Sundance Kid. But he hired a sketchy dude to do this job. He <laughs> was always hiring those guys and they always followed through on it. This is a structure was constructed in the 1880s from the locally quarried stone by outlaw Jack Judge Bennett. Judge learned his stone trade while in the Wyoming State Penitentiary. Jarvie ran like the general store that was around here. Mm -hmm. He did a lot. He ran the ferry. One of his passion projects was the ferry that hauled folks back and forth over the Green River. He would trade goods along with cash for rides. He felt the goods would benefit many. This cabin's cool. Instead of like using solid logs, he used them and everything. These, okay, now this is very interesting. These are railroad ties. Oh, are they? What would happen is the railroad ties would float down the river and then they would grab them and they'd <laughs> use them all over the place. That's hilarious. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh. John Jarvie was murdered in 1909 by two drifters who thought he was wealthy. The water wheel dugout is incredibly interesting. This is where like the Sundance Kid and Butch Cassidy and stuff was, was the water wheel. They potentially hid out in this little, I believe this is the dugout. Jarvie and his wife started out here. In later years also served as a hiding place for Browns Park Notorious transients Butch Cassidy and the Wild Bunch. Dun dun dun. dun. Cattle was something that Jarvie did a little bit of too. It's like a corral. Small bitty one. Probably bigger in its day. He was a musician, postmaster, 
blacksmith and more, a true MacGyver of his time, or perhaps MacGyver was the John Jarby of his time. Either way, it was a pleasure to see what a great man created. It has been a pleasure to explore Utah. It seems all the places we flocked to today were spotted and settled by many folks before us. They too saw an opportunity to settle in this breathtaking, peaceful, and extraordinary state. Well, that wraps up this week. We have a ton of designs on a bunch of products over in our t-shirt shop and other merchandise. We got all sorts of stuff over there. From today through the 9th, we have a sale 20% off yes. on everything. I think that's one of the biggest sales that we've had yet. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, the link will be down there in the description. If you missed last Wednesday, mom, dad, and Bryson completed, I believe they completed. Well, looks like the, they completed. Uh, <laughs> the patio in the back which is super exciting. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. We well, may or may not be back home. We may or may not. have seen it in real life and it's gorgeous. So <laughs> if you missed that video, the link there will be down in the description. Coming next Wednesday, Garen and Ellie are gonna have another exciting, jam-packed, and I'm sure adorable van conversion, I guess is yeah. what it's called, the conversion. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. It'll be coming out on Wednesday. For future plans for Bree and I, uh, we're going to be in Northern Oregon for essentially the month of December. We're going to be right on the border between both states. So if you're kind of in that general vicinity and you've got a homestead or some cool building that you've made and that you might want to share, please get a hold of us. Or if you know of a really fun historical homestead that you just want us to go see, you can email Bree at Bree at My Little Homestead and get us that information. We look forward to hearing from yeah. you. We are so excited for the many adventures that we have to come. Mm -hmm. It's going to be super fun. Thank you so much for being a part of our family and we look forward to hanging out with you on Monday for that podcast. Bye. Thank you. Look at all these deer. It's a whole batch of them. Hello, little deer. Oh dear. There's a few hunters back there. We should let them know. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what a group of deer is called. Is it called a herd? Is that like the like with for cows? Like you know how there's there's a gaggle of geese. Uh, gaggle of girls or whatever a gaggle of girls yeah and then uh, a group of boys is called uh, men is called a, a murmur of men i think it's like if you ever go into a group of guys it's like they're all murmuring you can hear a low murmur <laughs> i see and women just gaggle yep oh that's nice <laughs> <laughs> i'm not denying it i'm just saying that's nice. <laughs> our family moved from the city to the country thanks for taking part in our adventure we have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description. <laughs> salsa. Hi. Hi, Salsa. <laughs> Tell me like a cat rubbing against me. Look at this. This looks like it's just going to topple at any point. Look at that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that scary as heck. That'd be one cold dip. <laughs> it's like, I'm okay. <laughs> hey. You really want in there? Okay. Salsa's like, nope. <laughs> nope. Salsa's smart. What are you doing? <laughs> He's killing me. Which is... <laughs> Which is remarkable. Which is remarkable.